Hey Trail Riders, welcome back to the Daily Ride. I hope you guys are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about pluralism's persuasiveness. Our scriptures that get us through the Bible in a year are Deuteronomy 33, 1 through 34, 12, Psalm 48, 8 through 14, Proverbs 11, 19 through 21, Luke 12, 41 through 59. Again, we're going to be talking about pluralism's persuasiveness. Our focal passage is going to come from Psalm 48, verse 14, which says, This God, our God forever and ever, He will always lead us. The argument presented by the pluralist and the, that Christians must view their religion as one among many, and Jesus is the only one Savior among others, must be firmly resisted. <clears throat> It must sound arrogant to say so, but it is nevertheless a fact that Christianity is unique, absolute, definitive, ultimate, and final. Critics <coughs> of the uniqueness of Christianity can be very persuasive. The world is under a great threat. They tell us because of environmental pollution economic injustice and other many other problems nothing can that divides us including our religions should be considered as important as the need for to live together in harmony another emphasis is on the need to study uh, comparative faiths there is a sense that in which understanding what people other people believe is useful but not until the claims of Christianity are seen to be definitive and final. Christianity is not a comparative religion. It reveals God's one and only way to enter into a personal relationship with Him. Galatians 2.20 in the Amplified Bible reads as this, The life I live, I live by faith by adherence to and reliance on and complete trust in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Bishop Leslie Newbignan put it this way, If it is really true, as it is, that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me, how can I agree that this amazing act of matchless grace should merely become part of a syllabus of the comparative study of religions. Christ is not first in a class. He occupies the category all by himself. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, may the person of your Son, Jesus, become as real and as precious to us as he is to you. And teach us more about him so that we can make a clear to others why he is a savior beyond compare. We ask this and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, for further study on this, look at Acts 4, 1-12, 1 Timothy 2, 1-6, 1 Corinthians 3, 11, and keep these two questions in mind. What did Peter declare to the Sanhedrin? And two, what did Paul declare to Timothy? God bless you guys. I hope you'll continue to follow me here on the Daily Ride, and I'll see you on the next trail ride.